It's time for part two of the investigation for Farewell My Turnabout. Maya's been kidnapped? I think Edgeworth's supposed to come back. That's about all I got for ya. What is going on? Okay. Well, at least we were able to get Mr. Matt on guard on our, as our client. We know that he didn't do it, which is very important. Oh yeah. So, so what do we do now? Well, the trial is tomorrow and we only get this one chance. There's only one way to prove Mr. Ongard's innocence. We have to find the real killer. Okay, let's start looking. All right, let's go do look for some clues. Look, talk to him first. Oh, is he not here? Oh, ah, oh, the lawyer dude. So what did you find out? Well, uh, I'm still in the middle of investigating. I see, but I've already told you everything I know, dude. Yeah, we don't need to talk to him anymore. Um, can we go to the hotel? Yeah, okay, we're gonna go here. I feel like he's just gonna tell us stuff we already know. Hey, what do you think you're doing? You can't come within without. Good morning. Hold on, it's you. What are you doing on here? Um, I heard poor Duan was killed. Is that true? It's a bad rerun, is what this is. Another steel samurai doing the most evil of deeds. Um, you know, that's not entirely... I'll have you know what I... I was a huge fan of worms. Wow, why? Oh, all this stars of interest and drop one by one like flies. It's always been that way, ever since I was a little girl in elementary school. Okay, he's just gonna keep talking. Oh my gosh. Um, actually, I wanted to ask you about the murder. <laughs> Don't push me, boy. Um, Mr. Nick? I, um, I couldn't hear everything she said because she was talking too fast. Miss Obag, can you please speak a little slower? Don't boss me around, you spiky-haired smarty pants! Whippersnapper! <laughs> My dear Hammer died a year ago in that dreadful murder. And only one recently did I... Only recently did I finally find a star that makes my heart go ba-dump again. I don't know what to say. I ask you, why does every star I love die? I watch your words. No one's going to get away with saying anything bad about my Juan. But I haven't said anything. Well, I don't believe a word that woman says anyway. Huh? What woman? The irritating backwater girl with the afro and the horrible country accent. I mean, what is the matter of speaking supposed to be? Why does she never stop? Honestly, women these days. They don't know when the meaning of the word must. Goodness. Oh, she did start speaking slower. <laughs> Pearls, are you thirsty? I'm a little. I'm thirsty too. Peachy water. Not sponsored. I'll go find you juice or something. Wait, what? Why are we getting her juice? Thank you very much. Hey! You paying attention, young ones, today? I'm guessing Miss Oldbag heard everything from Lada. Want to ask you about what around the time of the murder? I don't know anything about that. I was getting here getting ready. Ready? Getting ready for what? The show, of course. Well, and the press conference afterwards. Cue mysterious music. Anyway, I don't know anything about the murder. I see. But. But if you're talking about what I saw, that's different. I saw it very clearly. <gasps> what? I saw the most important moment of the night. Oh my goodness. The most important moment? Oh, so now you treat me with respect, you disrespectful child. I can't do her accent, it hurts my throat. <laughs> when you speak to your elders, you should always be polite. Really, kids today. Please tell me, what did you see? <sighs> you are a turd. Four locks? The murder last night was gruesome, wasn't it? But then, what murder isn't? Please don't stray onto another tangent. Bring her a present. Okay, we gotta go elsewhere. Mm. Alright, so they're still investigating. I wonder if we can do any investigating of our own. Well, roll for sleeves and give it a try. Pretty sure this will be the same information. Okay, yeah, this is a lot of the same stuff. Um, let's go back to the hallway. Maybe that'll give us something. Yeah. 
Hey, you're here! Been waiting for you, Mr. Lawyer. Lada. Hey, Mr. Capfella. The thief showed his face. What? What? Arrest him. Put him on trial. Find him guilty. Give him the death penalty. What's wrong, Lada? Are you feeling alright? Looked here and there and up and down the mountain, but it ain't here. So why don't you just hurry up and give it back to me, you creep? Um, what are you talking oh, looking at? My camera! Camera! It's my life butt. I'm gonna die without my $700 camera. Your camera? Look, don't lots of people say the criminal always goes back to the scene of the crime? And looky looky, you're here. Yeah, I'm faced with a lot of trouble. Huh? Goodness. So you lost your camera? It ain't no ordinary camera. You buy it in the store and it's 1600 brand new. Huh? But didn't you just say you bought for 700 I had a nice long talk with the guy at the store about five hours, I reckon. I made this itty bitty scratch on it and the manager got all huffed up in the face. He gave me his talking to and he was real mean about it too. He done made me cry at that. When did you lose your camera? Last night after the murder happened. It must have been when I, when I was busy running looking for, into things. That's when I lost sight of my dear darling and spent sweetie. Lotta, what did you capture with that expensive camera of yours? I don't rightly know. I snapped a shot of anything that caught my eye. So I don't remember. Besides, I couldn't get anything from my big scoop. I wonder if Lotta's missing camera is even connected to the murder. It probably has some rather incriminating photos. Tell me what you know what happened. Well, from the ceremony last night, I was hanging around here in this area. Yeah, actually, I was here till around the time Mr. Ungard was arrested. What were you doing here? You surely went to school, city boy. Wherever a lot of heart goes, there's a story to be found. A big scoop to be had. A big scoop? I told you before, I'm going to be the best tabloid photographer the world's ever seen. Wrecking course. That means I'm always looking for the perfect shot. I wonder what the scoop she was after. Although, I was also on the lookout for the other stars that were here. So, yeah, maybe I wasn't here the entire time. Lotta, are you sure you weren't here the entire time? So you could take a picture for your big scoop? Well, maybe I was, but that's what a real journalist do. I got some juicy inside info, so I thought to myself, why not get a picture for proof? What kind of story is it that you were, would hang around here? Ah, uh, uh, oops, sorry, Mr. Laura, can't be telling you that. Trade secret, you know. Not again. We've been stopped, haven't we? <laughs> yeah, take that, Mr. Lawyer. I'm glad someone around here is happy, Miss Lotta, and your I rule smile. Okay, um, let's see, what do I... <sighs> and I just bought that camera. Who did it? The thieving rascal? Please don't look straight at me when you're saying that. When I find the bar who went and done this, they're gonna be with a bully. And if you do that, don't expect me to defend you. Uh, do you anything? I've told you how many times. I'm a journalist. I got so much info running, I forget things here and there. Please don't get so worked up over this. Okay, um, let me just see. I just want to see. What do we need to do to unlock this? I bet the kidnapper stole her camera. Lotta, answer my questions. On the night of the murder, why were you loitering around the victim's room? I told you, didn't I? From my scoop. What do I want to know about are the details of the scoop. That's not something I can tell you. I mean, there's my bread and butter. Alright then, an unpleasant tabloid photographer looking for a scoop. I'm going to say that you were looking into a scandal. Girl. Could it be that you, Lotta Hart, were looking for a break with a huge story? Perhaps an unfolding scandal between Han Corda and this person? Who the heck is that? Um. Oh. Really? So, who's the person anyway? Really? Okay. 
Okay, we gotta look into this. That's crazy. Who could it be? Okay, let's see if there's anything new. I don't think there's gonna be anything new, but just in case. I'm gonna end up defending- I would love to defend Lada in court. It'd be quite the challenge. You have to go through the hallway to get there, so maybe there's a picture of him in the hallway. Okay, um, nothing crazy new here, so we're gonna go back- oh! Okay. We need some evidence here. Um, where are we? We're in Mr. Matt on guard's at dressing room. This is our client's room. Matt help you with something? Oh, hello. Um, we're... Mr. Ungard's lawyer, correct? I gathered as much. I looked, also looked for lawyers on my end, but to no avail. Um, how did you know I'm his lawyer? You were just saying he's your client. In a situation like this, the only person who would use such a word would be his lawyer. <gasps> wow! It's a simple deduction, really. The trial's tomorrow in Mr. Ungard's situation is looking rather grim. So you came here, one stop in your mad dish, mad dash, to find clues to build his case, correct? Well, you're not totally right, but you're not totally off either. It's really not the time to be showing off, Mr. Nick. I'm Adrian Andrews. I hate to waste time, so let's get down to business. All right. She may be a small stature, but appearance can be deceiving. I assume the first thing you need to know is what everyone was doing that night, correct? <clears throat> yeah, that's correct. And I will tell you. Before the award ceremony, I had dinner with Mr. Ungard. In this very room, I might add. Dinner? What did you eat? I told you, I hate to waste time with trifling details. If you look up, take a look at the table yourself. You wouldn't need to ask me. Uh, she's probably fun at parties. When the award show was starting, I headed for Viola Hall. And after the show ended, you came back to his room? No, I had to spend some small errands to run. I helped with the preparations in the lobby. Oh. When it was time for the post-ceremony show, I came back to call Mr. Ungard. After that, I went to visit Miss Corrida. And that's when you found his body, isn't it? He really held swan through everything. She does seem to be mentally tough as nails. So, about you and... Stop right there. You aren't seriously about to ask me how Mr. Ungard and I are related, are you? Sorry. I have no idea how he could have chose you as his lawyer. Why does she have to go and say something like that? Mr. Nick, calm down and hang in there. I'll give you a soda up to leave us to us later. I already gave you my name earlier, but I'll add that I am Mr. Uncard's manager. His manager? Speaking of managers, did the victim, Mr. Corrida, have one? No, he did not. He didn't? Global Studios has a very different policy from Worldwide Studios in that Worldwide Studios does not assign individual managers to their stars. I see. This industry is very ruthless and unforgiving. Actually, you look quite ruthless and unforgiving yourself to your poor partner. Dragging a little girl like her to places like this, <laughs> honestly. You're wrong. I, I'm doing this to help Mystic Maya. Pearls, calm down and hang in there. I'll buy you juice later, alright? I'd like to ask you about this. That's not trifling. Okay, wait. Nope. Wow. Nope. Okay. I'm just making sure I'm not missing anything. You were the one taking care of the arrangements for this press conference, right? Yes, that's right. But Mr. Uncle said he didn't know about it. Is that what he said? Huh? Actually, I didn't know all the details either. It was a request from the publicity department. All they did was help out and do what I was asked. Oh, I see. I wonder about that. It wouldn't take her to be the type of person to do something without knowing the details. to become Mr. Ungard's manager. He's a pleasure to manage with his nice disposition. Hmm, Mr. Ungard does seem like a rather weak-willed man, always doing what he's told. He's always saying my manager, white Mr. Nick. Did you know the victim? Yes, I knew him. The world is such a small place, after all. 
Did you know about his rivalry with Nick Samurai? Honestly, they were like children when it came to that. Time and time again, those two competed with each other over the most trivial things. If either one of them wasn't so stubborn, then maybe no one would have needed to die. Got a hunch. She must know why he was killed. Do you have any ideas as to as to why Mr. Corridor was murdered? Why would you ask me about such a thing? I'm just doing my job, so do you have any ideas? Three locks? Oh my no! Oh my gosh. Miss Andrews? Sorry, but there's nothing more I have to add to this conversation. Is it a psych walk, Mr. Nick? Yeah, there's getting to be more and more of these lately. Hmm, okay, let's um Examine the room. Let's see, it's probably Mr. Suitcase. It's a lot of stuff. Okay, mm let's bone. There's something weird about this plate. I just wish I would put my finger on what it is. There's some samurai looking clothes. I think that jacket is the thing called a happy. I'm sure something like that would make a great souvenir. Hey, I would be absolutely thrilled. Poor Maya. That's the bedroom over there. That's a bed? Wow, they have really big beds here. Looks like dishes left over from dinner. I'm so just Mr. I'm glad Mr. Un Andrew's plates. Looks like they had a T-bone steaks with what's with Global Studios and T-bone steaks. Okay, I think that might be it. Let's see. There's, 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 there's like nothing useful. Okay, back. Um, let's present the Magatama and just see. There's no. It's the first one has to be Lotus, right? Oh my gosh. This is crazy. Hmm. He was not that close. I'm mean, good at being intimate. I'm not good at being intimate. You're not good at being intimate. Okay, I have no evidence for that. Okay, so I need to go talk to. I probably need to go talk to our client. Hmm. I need to. Okay, let's go to the hotel. No, not there. I didn't mean to go there. You know, after having to deal with circus music for so long, this is kind of nice. Oh, there's another room. <laughs> Mr. Nick, where are we? We're in Juan Gordo's room, Pearls. Mr. Corridor, the victim, which makes this a crime scene, too. Oh, it's you. So what happened? The kidnapper, has he contacted you again? Not yet. He probably won't until we win Mr. On Guard's acquittal. Um, you doing okay, pal? Hanging in there? I just want Maya to be alright. We don't have a lot of time left, but I'm gonna help you as much as I can, pal. Can you do that? Even if we want to look around the crime scene? Just as once. Special circumstances, right, pal? I'll even tell you everything I know, but you gotta keep quiet. It's my neck on the line. Thank you. Oh, that's right. I got you guys a map of the hotel, pal. Here you go, little missy. Wow, you're giving it to me? Thank you. <laughs> Wouldn't you want to get want you to get lost in a hotel too big for its own good? Mr. Nick, I got a map. That's great, Pearls. Um, but Mr. Nick, I can't read what it says. Alright, spill your guts. Do you know what was the cause of death? Well, technically the final autopsy report isn't out yet, but <laughs> one look at the victim should tell you, pal. It should? Yeah, here's a picture. There's a knife in his chest. Yeah, pal, that's the murder weapon. So he was stabbed to death. They're looking at the fingerprints down at the lab right now. There were fingerprints on the knife? Yep, it looks like they're pretty sure they're not Mr. On Guards. That's bad. Maya! Why was Mr. On Guard arrested? Because we had evidence on him. Evidence? It looks like the victim, Juan Corrida, really put up a big fight. 
Yeah, one look at the crime scene, you can tell. There's signs of a struggle. Well, yeah, during the fight his button came off. Oh, and he has the button in him. That's not all. What? There was a witness, pal. A witness? Who? That lady, Miss Oldbag. Please, anyone but her. The prosecution has plenty of evidence to make a solid case. Not to mention there's something around where the Vic was... Th that's a little off? As in, that's for you to figure out, pal. Alright, let's try to figure it out, Mr. Nick. Okay. Let's examine the room. <sighs> Empty. Vegetable juices. A beet? That's weird. Hmm. That's a lot of bears. He threw away some bears? Poor teddies. Hard to bear with all these problems. Grow! <laughs> why are we why are we going back to the clown? I don't think I want to bear with the trauma the last case caused me. <laughs> me neither, Nick. What's wrong, Mr. Nick? That is so true. <laughs> hmm. It's so messy here. Pearls really likes things neat and tidy, I take it. There's lots of electronic things in here that I've never seen before. Hey, Mr. Nick, tell me what they are, pretty please. Okay, that over there is a watch. You wear it on your wrist? I know what a watch is. <laughs> I forgot I was talking to Pearls and not Maya. It's a suitcase. It's mm. a lot of stuff. Why are there so many bears? That's so weird. Oh my gosh. Okay. Um. So that's a bed, right? Yep, it's big, but it's a bed. Mr. Nick is so soft. Big beds must be a rarity for her. Bottles of cosmetics. This is probably where Mr. Carter fought his assailant. What are those bits of glass from? A flower face, may a flower face maybe? <laughs> there are flowers on the floor, but I don't know what they are. You don't know much about flowers, do you, Mr. Nick? Looks like Mr. Carter had dinner last night. This bottle is tomato juice. We had a lot of food at the awards show last night, but I wonder if the stars had gone on stage after, on after only eating a meager meal like this. More bears. It's a telephone on the ground. Why? Let's see, am I missing things? Oh. This is a guitar case, I guess. A little beat up, but it's still usable. That's Swain's the guitar is not here. Maybe he forgot to bring it to the show? But Mystic Maya, she said the white guitar was the Jammin' Ninja's signature item. That's true. Huh? The guitar case is wet. It's only wet on top of the lid. Yeah, there's no water inside the case. This is water, isn't it? Um... Is it water? It's a beautiful wine glass, but there's tomato juice in it. Ooh, tomato juice. I really don't like it much. There's a bottle of it on the table over there. That's probably where this came from. But it doesn't it seem weird? What seems weird? I mean, everything else is scattered all over the floor. She's right. The flower vase was broken and the makeup is strewn everywhere. Why is this glass the only thing that's still all right? Hmm. Little check. This is a nice little trick. If you're ever playing this game, you just hold it down. That's blood. That is not water. No way. The real murder weapon. Okay. Well, we've absorbed lots. So about this wine glass. Huh, so you notice it, pal. The whole crime scene was a mess, but this glass was the only thing left untouched. You noticed that too? No, actually Miss Von Karma noticed it first. Yeah, Pearl's noticed it before me too. Hey. Wait a minute. Does that mean Miss Von Karma's here at the hotel? Yeah, she's around. Man, you're gonna be in so much trouble, pal. Especially if she catches you in here. Well, you can bet the instant I see her, I'll be running the thousand meter dash. What? It's a beeping noise. I heard this sound. It's Miss Von Karma. <gasps> For some reason, whenever I hear that sound, she pops out of nowhere and whips me. Come to think of it, that's exactly what happened last time. Sorry, I've got to make myself scarce. Later, pal. 
Ah! <laughs> At last, you will reveal your true nature, Mr. Phoenix. Right. Oh, would it be too much to ask you to be nice to me for a change? So you're the top to steal information from pitiful and hopeless detectives. That's very dishonorable honorable of you. Ow! Hey, don't you dare run away, scrappy Miss Trenchcoat. Oh, I didn't think the detectives of this country could be this pitiful. Ah, detective, come over for a second. This is just abuse! I feel better knowing at least you were them not to man enough to face your punishment. He was so scared he just froze up on the spot. Mr. Phoenix writes, You, you have soiled my perfect prosecution record. I'll never forget that. This time, victory is mine. Victory is yours? Is that all this means to you? What? Hmm. Come, Scrappy, the investigation briefing is about to begin. Yes, sir. This is not over yet. I swear on my family's honor. Ow. Why did she throw at me now? What is this? Well, I guess this means I gotta get back to the precinct now, pal. You ever need me? Come down to criminal affairs, alright? If you can, try not to let Miss Von Karma see you. Oh, hold on. I should probably, like, actually examine that, huh? Mr. Nick, what's this piece of paper? It's called an autograph. Autograph? The paper's got Mr. Carter's name written on it, so it's his autograph. I can't read it at all. To be honest, I've never seen writing that looks like this. It's a very special way of writing called cursive. Look here, see how it says to my dearest Wendy and more normal letters here? This slappy and weedable writing is crazy and cool to give it to someone. Hold on. Wendy, I've heard that name somewhere before. Wendy old bag. Oh my gosh. Not Wendy old bag. Please, not Wendy old bag. I feel like she's gonna be like the last nut to crack. You know what I mean? Okay, let's go talk to old bag. Oh. Oh, Mr. Wright, how are you? Uh, Mr. Powers, have you been here the entire time? Yeah, people connected to the murder aren't allowed to go home, let alone leave. Can you tell me a little more about the Nickel Samurai TV show? Okay. <laughs> the Nickel Samurai is an action hero program aimed towards kids. It's the sequel to the Steel Samurai. I see. This time, there are three Samurai brothers. Aluminum Samurai, Tin Samurai, and of course, the Nickel Samurai. It's a love- why in Neo Old Tokyo? I see. Wait, a love what? A love why? This girl Sayu works at a tea shop, and all three guys fall for her at the same time. Oh, I guess the Y shape is like the three brothers colliding over this one girl. Anyway, Sayu is actually the daughter of the evil Strawberry Clan's leader. Sounds like an unusual situation, like Romeo and Juliet times three. Yeah. Strange thing is, this sort of forbidden love story is really big with the office ladies. Um, yes, bro? What happens next? I want to know. Miss Sayo, does Miss Sayo fall in love? She does, doesn't she? Every Sunday at 8 a.m. I'm going to stop watching Kiss Masterpiece Tito starting this week. I can't believe she's really considering it. So what's the Jam and Ninja TV show like? It started from a remake of an old movie. I'll just tell you the truth. The Jam and Ninja, like the samurai shows, is geared towards kids. It's a story of a ninja who can't scale a wall but became a big pop star anyway. Um, what? He was really lousy ninja. Absolutely couldn't do any ninja things right at all. But boy could he sing. With his trusty bright red guitar in hand, he took the ancient world by storm. A ninja with a bright red guitar. And then, the final boss fight in front of his beloved Princess Mizora. Jammin' versus the Myromachi 5. Suddenly. Our brave hero catches a not so jamming cold the night before battle three. That's too bad for him. Yeah. 
This kind of pop music based love story is something high school girls really like. Um, yes, Pearl? What happens next? I want to know. Damn it, the Jam and Ninja. Will he be able to sing? What about Princess Misola? Every Sunday at 8 a.m. Oh, which show should I watch? Hmm. Can't believe she's really considering it. <sighs> okay, let's confront Old Bag with that information. Oh my gosh. Wendy, okay, um let's what do I need on you to get the Megatama? Why why four locks? That's wild. I don't think she's gonna tell me anything else. I'll be honest with you for now. Then please tell us what you saw. But oh, what a waste. And here I am having a perfectly good chance to have a little fun at you, young man's expense. I'm a little dead off the pole after all. Doesn't that imply you aren't a good person? I'll give you what you want. Oh. Hold on. I'm gonna save my progress. I know I. We're gonna save my progress. I don't care. Okay. Um. Let me present that autograph. I don't think I'm gonna have everything because there's four locks. That's crazy. Jeez. This one's autograph. Yeah, it is. And it even says to my dearest Wendy on it. That's me, right? Right? Um, my name is Wendy Oldbag. So that Wendy has to be me, right? Well, it may say Wendy. But somehow I don't think Juan has this Wendy in mind when he signed it. Oh, please give it to me. Let me have it, please. Um, I can't let you have it just like that. Yes, yes, I know. How about an exchange? Oh, Wow, she must really want this autograph. My offer isn't good enough for you. Fine, it's right. You win. Wendy go back. Ready to open up her heart. All for my dear Swan. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> it was, all I needed was the autograph. <laughs> autograph given to Wendy, dearest. <laughs> oh my gosh. I feel bad for you now, huh? I'll tell you, I saw him that night. I saw him coming out of Juan's room. You kidding? Oh no! It was about ten minutes before Juan's body was discovered. It was just a coincidence. I was on my way to the toilet, minding my own business. And did you tell that to the police? Well, of course. I thought I could get a gift certificate or two out of it, maybe more. Gift certificate? I've been recruited again for that part of the trial. You know, the trial tomorrow. This time you're gonna get it. I'm gonna work hard to get your client pronounced guilty. But Mr. Ankar hasn't done anything bad. I don't care about details like that. I know we did my poor Juan in. I just do. That yellow, that yellow petty chicken. I wonder what that would look like. I trust my senses. I know when someone did something bad, I say he did it. What did Mr. Ankar ever do to her to deserve this? What did he do to you? You don't know. That guy, he framed my Juan. He created that scandal that flagged more Juan. Mr. Nick, what is it? What's a scandal? Oh, I'm gonna tell you about that after we get home, okay? This poor Juan, led astray by the wiles of that vile temptress. Mr. Nick, what do vials and wild tempests mean? Um, how about we just listen to what Obag has to say for now, okay, Pearls? So, Miss Obag, who is this woman you're talking about? Adrian Andrews, of course, who else? That guy, he shoved the girl onto Juan on purpose. His own manager, but why? I thought lawyers were smart. It was to create a scandal to make Juan lose face. That girl drove Juan into a scandal that dragged his reputation through the mud. Sounds like a pretty standard definition of a scandal to me. Why do you know about that anyway, Miss Oldbag? I'm one of Juan's biggest fans. I'm always out there gathering information. There's nothing I don't know. 
Do you have proof that Mr. On Guard did what you say he did? Next week's issue of a certain magazine says so. Um, of course, a tabloid. Next week. Does that mean something people don't know about yet? Why would Miss Olbeck have information like that? And where did she get it? <laughs> She's climbing up. Okay, um... Okay, let me save my progress again. Because now... There's a scandal with the manager. I mean, the manager's kind of sketchy. Not gonna lie. I didn't think she was, you know, scandal sketchy. Okay, sure. Alright, you little stubborn little... Little, uh, I don't know what to call you, but you're making me mad. On and yeah, baby, Th this woman. She's Adrian Andrews, Matt Ungar's manager. Hm. The Nickel Samurai's manager caught secure, secretly meeting with his rival, the Jam and Ninja. It would be the hottest story of the season, wouldn't it? You're pretty good at this guessing thing, Mr. Lore. But you can't just make up any old thing and think it'll make the papers. You gotta have backup. Backup? Yeah, yeah. You got that, what's it called, new sauce? Um, you mean new source? That's it. Show me some show Swanga has something with Miss Andrews. Do I have anything? Mm -hmm. Oh shoot. I'm, okay. I'm like, I don't think I do actually. Not yet. Okay. Nope, not yet. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's see, I, you have four locks on. Maybe I need to go talk to him again. I don't have any proof yet. Motive for murder. Depressing and stupid. Okay, I have to find proof. Hold on. Um, let me. I'm gonna load my progress real quick uh, from the other one. Load this one. Okay, let's go talk to. Oh. Um, we have to find her camera. It's also really sketchy. Okay, let's go to this one instead. Is there anything new? I don't think there is, but let me double check. Okay, nope, 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 What'd you know about him? He de he debuted around at the same time as Matt and everything, you know? Really? 
It started out small. First it was singing contests and swimming competitions, then it was bowling tournaments, and then it was who could throw the best. New Year's parties, Juan was always trying to one-up Matt. Lately, those two were escalating to more and more dangerous things. Thought no good would come of it, so I began to worry. Too bad Juan's story ended so soon. Matt's younger than me, but you can practically see his star potential. His star potential? I got his autograph the other day. Feels kind of wrong now, doesn't it? I don't care what people say. Matt didn't kill Juan. I know he didn't. Why do you know? Oh, there's nothing. Okay. Um, let's go to the hotel lobby. Dun, dun, dun. here. Oh, we're back here. It doesn't look like Mr. Scruffy Detective's here. Great. Now even Pearls is calling him Scruffy. Thanks, Francisca. Hmm. <sighs> they even said something about an investigation briefing earlier, right? Why don't we come back try again later when they're done? Okay. I guess that's all we can do, right, Mr. White? Nick. Mr. Nick. Not Mr. White. Mr. Nick. Let's go to the detention center. Wait, hold on. First, what happened? After I got the award, I took a break and went to my room. I had that post-ceremony stage show to do, so I was in my nickel samurai costume. And you were alone the entire time? My manager was running around being busy, so yeah. Because of the press conference you were supposed to hold after the show. I told you, dude. I have no idea about any pref conference, alright? Um, this car was already dead? Yep, okay, we talked about this. Okay, yeah, we already did talk about all this yesterday. I didn't do that. Okay, let's just start presenting some things. So why are you carrying around that transceiver? I wanted to ask you about it. Why do you do everything it tells you to do? You know, the messages it sends you to. On a second thought, it probably doesn't have anything to do with Maya's kidnapping. That's a secret. Okay, whatever, dude. About her missing camera. <sighs> um. Hi, Pearl. Okay. Um. Is there anything I can present to you? I don't. Do you know about Lada's missing camera? Weirdo. What? Okay, she she's completely done. She's given us all we can get out of her. Fine. Let me examine the room. I'm just gonna click on things and do this more. Yeah, there's nothing really. Okay, um... What is your deal? Why are you puffing and puffing and blowing the house down? Have I presented everything to you? Oh shoot, I didn't mean to do that. Oh, we should talk about the manager. Duh. Hey, that's Miss Andrews. She's Matt's manager. Actually, I was interested in her for a little bit. Just a little. Hmm, so Mr. Powers likes this type of woman. What do you know about her? Well, so here's the thing. I don't really know her nowhere, you know? <gasps> There's sort of a small rumor going around about her right now. A rumor? <laughs> if you're interested, I'd be glad to share what I know. He's so happy. Would you mind telling me about this gossip? So you are interested in it. I figured you would be. Yeah. I have such a weakness for celebrity gossip, too. Oh, really? You too, huh? Yeah, so take a look at this. It's like a tabloid. Alright, let's see what's here. Jam and Midnight Run. So mysterious, a beautiful manager to the stars, Miss A.A. You see now, don't you? What? You can stop pretending to be in the dark, Mr. Wright. Juan Cordova didn't have a manager of his own. Which means if we're talking about a certain manager with the initials AA. 
Adrian Andrews. Yeah, exactly. This is big news. But it seems kind of odd. That woman. Together with the biggest rival of her client? That's that wonderful thing that only can happen between two people. Mr. Powers was so happy. Pearls is just following along, not having any idea why it... as to why he's smiling. Well, like the saying goes, one man's garbage is another man's treasure. Mm-hmm. There we go. Okay, we can probably unlock this stuff now. With what's her face? Hello. Oh, we should just yeah, do the Megatama right away. Hold on. Let me save just in case I press the wrong thing. Mm-hmm. Cool. Cool. Present the Megatama. I don't know how I got through the entire first game without, without using these like save tactics, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You sketchy, sketchy journalist. Mm-hmm. 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 Now you now she wants proof. This is the article from a certain weekly tabloid, Jammin' Midnight Rendezvous, to the mysterious yet beautiful managers of the stars, Miss A.A. Ah! Uh, Mr. Corotta did not didn't have a manager of his own. What's more, his rival, Miss Sangar's manager, Adrian Andrews, she has the initials A.A. You saw this article and then thought to take some pictures of them as proof. That's why you were lurking around Miss Corotta's door last night. Ah! Uh, You were looking into Miss Crowder that and Miss Andrew's affair, weren't you? Mister. <laughs> you got it! I was gonna get myself a scoop by catching him in a big meme. But there's already an article about it in one of the weekly tablet magazines. It's no longer breaking news. What you gonna say? Her initials are AA, what kind of vague thing is that? That ain't no proof of nothing. People are gonna wanna see real proof. Well, at least I do, so that's what I'm gonna do. Getting photos. Oh. I'm gonna whip up the reader's interest with some gossip and a little misleading. Then spice it up a little and have myself an exclusive story. Wow, a lot of nice journalistic integrity you got there. I already finished writing up my spicy article, you know. But the paper I wrote it on. My note is for myself. It's gone. Your note to yourself. It was inside my case of my $1,600,000 camera. They done run it together. I came here for my big story. Didn't come here to have my treasure disappear on me. Yeah, I understand. It's enough to make a gal go bonkers, I tell you. What's with people now, anyway? I never thought I'd see the day when someone done steal something from me. You really want that note back, huh? I have no idea why, though. The story on that note is probably a bold-faced lie. Hmm. Okay, let's see if we can... I don't know if we have enough information. But let's give it a shot. Okay. Present the Magatama. Hello. Present the Magatama. <laughs> this isn't gonna be fake four locks like Miss Oldbag. I'm so funny. I can't. It's so funny. Mm-hmm. You and Mr. Corrida had an intimate relationship, did you not? A silly third-rate tabloid article. <clears throat> if you even had half your wits about you, you wouldn't believe such rubbish. Well, it seems quite a few people have already bought into this story, huh? Hmm, that's to be expected in a world filled with crooks and liars. Not to sell, stay on your good side. In any case, I despite I despise interpersonal relationships like that. I see. However, what if there was a need for you to get close to someone? Mm -hmm. Need to get close to Miss Carda as if there was ever such a need. Take that! 
dang it. I'm just going to try a few different ones and then I'll um, Who's sake? Will powers maybe? Nope yeah, I'm going to try one more and then I'm going to go back What about for yourself? Nope. Hmm. I think we need to find that camera. Okay, nope, go back. Who's sake? Okay, uh, let's load. <laughs> Maybe we need... What else is there to talk about? We already talked about all that. Um, present... Profiles, maybe? How about her? Okay, yeah, she's not gonna... I feel like we're not gonna get much out of these guys. Let's double... Th no, there's not gonna be anything in here. We were just here. Um, okay. Maybe something will change somewhere? Let's go see if Will is still around. Um, talk about the article. I don't think there's anything else to talk about with you either. Maybe I'll show Miss Oldbag the article. We can try. Otherwise, we're just gonna have to go back to my client and talk to him. Mm -hmm. Oh, let's see if uh, they're done here. Yes. Okay. Mm. He's back. Hey, so you came, pal? Why would why the blunt greeting? Uh, because there's nothing to be friendly or happy about. What do you mean by that? Well, things look perfect this time around. The evidence and testimony are airtight. But, but, we can't just roll over and die. We have to stay positive. What's going on? What's going on? So what do you mean, the evidence is airtight? I can't give you all the details, pal, but there's two big pieces. Two? And both of them are in this photo. First is the button that's missing from the victim's chest. Hmm, that's the button you found dur during your body search. Yep, found it on the folds of Nickel Samurai's special pants. Um, uh, and the second one? The knife in his chest pile, the fingerprints on the knife in his chest to be exact. <gasps> fingerprints? You didn't even have to ask, little missy, it's obvious. They're mad on guards. Tomorrow's trial talk about being stuck between a rock and a hard place. So what about this airtight testimony? It's that old security lady, Miss Oldbag. I thought so. What do you mean you thought so? Didn't she, did she tell you something, pal? Well, I even told her not to open her mouth at hers and blab to anyone. Her blab knob is stuck on ten. There's no turning it down, trust me. Yeah, well, Miss Oldbag saw it all, pal. She saw Mr. Rongarda come out of the victim's room around the estimated time of death. <gasps> no way! Pretty interested in this bit of gossip ourselves. The scandal? Why? Well, two years ago, a woman committed suicide. Oh, uh, what? <gasps> Her name was Celeste Impacts. And she was Juan Cordova's manager. The victim's manager? But that's not all, pal. Miss Impacts was Miss Adrian Andrews' mentor. She taught Miss Andrews everything she knew about the business from square one. Her mentor? A woman who was both Miss Cordova's manager and Miss Andrews' manager. Mentor. Could her death have something to do with this case? 
You want to know more about her path? Yes, please. Celeste. She's the victim's manager. Was also Miss Adrian, and she's a mentor. It's been two years since her suicide, and now those two are linked again by another death. Or maybe it's just a coincidence. Ah. Oh. <laughs> I'm getting sick of dealing with a foolish idiot after another. Miss Mon Karma. You can't keep to stop arguing yourself with the enemy, can you? I don't need a traitor in my midst. You don't? You don't mean... I do. Scruffy. You have 30 minutes to get out of here. You will are no longer needed. Goodbye. That's... Wait. Please wait, sir. If I don't get this month's... Quiet. If it weren't for traitors like you, I would have won. Is that what you want to say? Who? That voice. <laughs> Edgeworth! It's been a long time, right? That this person! This is Mr. Edgeworth! I'm actually so excited, I don't know. What am I going to do with you? Still blaming others when things go wrong. You haven't changed a bit, Francisca. You, you, how dare you show your face to me with such a shred of shame upon it. You soiled the bunk on my name, dragged it to the mud. You even run away with your tail between your legs like an ill-bred dog you are. Are you talking about the Von Karma family creed to be perfect in every way? Then let's hear it, Francisca. How are things going? I hear you are having a rough time maintaining perfection in this country. You. You seem to be getting crushed under the weight of it all. That's why I came back. Keep your assumptions to yourself. I, I haven't given it yet. I won't lose. This case is mine. I've never had it over to you. Never. Mr. Phoenix writes, I will see you tomorrow in court. This will be a clinical lesson on the meaning of total victory. Hmm. Still the same wild mare she always was. Edgeworth! What the? I thought you, the prosecutor Miles Edgeworth, had, had gone and died. Mr. Nick! I, I never wanted to see you again. I think that's enough of a warm welcome for someone you haven't seen in a year. Are you gonna run it in tomorrow's trial? You heard her, right? That wild mare hasn't given in yet, it seems. So no, I don't think I'll be making an appearance. Your hatred for me is quite unhealthy, not to mention one-sided. But I will say one thing. You can't win on your own at the trial tomorrow. What is that supposed to mean? I have something definitive that you lack. And working together is the definition of teamwork. It's the power to find the truth. The truth? In order to understand this case, you'd have to understand a certain truth. Well, if you feel the need for my assistance, it is available to you. Please! I'm not in charge of this case, so I can be a bit more generous with information. Just what is going on inside his head? I, I want help with... A lot of things may have happened, however, Manfred von Karma was still my mentor. And a perfect win record is proof of a von Karma. One year ago, you could not establish guilt in a few cases. Are those losses the reason you suddenly disappeared from the prosecutor's office? Did you leave because you had lost your perfect win record? To think your motivation for prosecuting trials was so selfish. It'd be better for everyone if you never came back from the dead, Edgeworth. I see. Now let me ask you something. Why do you stand in the courtroom? What is your reason? Well, with Francisca, she almost always says, I will defeat you this time, the instant she sees me. <laughs> but the courtroom is not a personal battlefield for prosecutors and lawyers. I stand in the courtroom to defend my client. To save their lives. To save your client, you say. He knows. He knows! Oh no! He knows! Those who think only have their own ego-driven goals. Those kind of prosecutors are reprehensible to me. Even if you're a prodigy. Or someone like you, Edgeworth. 
It looks like there is still a lot you have yet to learn. A lot I have yet to learn, me. Hmm. Well, that's enough for now. The time when you will see is coming soon enough. He knows. What a turd. He knows. He knows. I have no interest in talking about useless evidence. Put a little more thought into what you show me, Phoenix Wright. Yo! What was this? Wait. One more idea. We are looking into leads, but we can only look into a few key players with our limited resources. There's no reason for us to waste our energy investigating this person. Adrienne Andrews. She holds a large secret within herself. A secret? You can't help but feel that this whole case revolves around her. While I was abroad, these deplorable types of actors became popular, I take it? Well, refreshing like a spring breeze is his motto. Re refreshing. And what is so refreshing about a spring breeze? Sounds like the pollen is not treating him well this year. There's an interesting rumor about this man. You mean the one about Miss Andrews getting close to him? But that's pretty common tabloid fare, isn't it? I don't take things at face value when there's more to be found. Hold on. Do you know? Alright, I'm leaving you. I was so excited to see you and now I'm done. <laughs> you disappoint me as always, Edgeworth. <laughs> uh, okay, let's see if we can... Oh shoot, wait. I forgot there's one more thing I have to talk to him about. <laughs> hold on, hold on. This dramatic, he's back music. Okay, hold on. The lady who is dead. Hmm. This woman is another key to solving this case. Do, do you really think so? She was Adrian Andrews' mentor a long time ago. But she suddenly called away by a different show and became Juan Corda's manager. And then, a few months later, Celeste's impacts died. But her death was ruled a suicide, wasn't it? Yes. But there is still one riddle yet to be solved. A riddle? Her note. It went missing. No one could find it. It vanished. Okay. Um. Let's. Okay. Let's talk about her with other people now. Really? You don't- okay. Interesting. You don't know who she is. Okay, do you know who she is? What if I present Edgeworth? <laughs> Really? <laughs> oh. Looks like Miss Andrews isn't here. That's not good. I still have a few questions I want to ask her. And see, is it Cyclock on a hot way? Well, we don't have much of a choice. I guess we'll have to come back later. Anything useful? No. Maybe she's in the other room. Darn it. Darn it, darn it, darn it. I don't want to talk to you. You're useless to me. Anything new? Anything new? I don't think so. Let me double check. Anything new? New information. Information. Okay, let's leave. <sighs> Shoot. Where'd she go? Let's check the hall.
Nope. Edgeworth, what a letdown. You think she'll talk about Edgeworth because she has a crush on him? <laughs> nope. <laughs> That's funny. Why is she wearing a spacesuit? <laughs> Go to my office? Nope. Detention center, maybe. Okay, let's talk to you about some of this stuff. Hold on. Um, what's wrong? How much do you know? What do you mean, how much? Mr. Lawyer, I may be your client, but I hope you will keep yourself out of my personal life. Uh, no, I would never. No, if you'll excuse me, I have a lunch appointment I have to keep. You're in detention. Who in the world are you going to eat with? The security guard? Mr. Nick, this Celeste impacts lady. Somehow I get the feeling she's a very important person in all this. He's gone. Um, can I talk to him about Maya? Okay, let me let me see if I can I don't think it's gonna work. Mm -mm. What am I missing? Also, where'd she go? Why are you looking so dang smug? I don't think it's gonna work with her either. Mm. Okay, um. Mm. Where'd she go? Dang it. Really? What am I supposed to do? Bruh. I'm just making sure. I don't trust anything. Also, why'd he just appear on me like that? That's so rude. Also, I literally can't. There must be something else Edgeworth has to tell me. Nothing else? Nothing? Darn it, I needed to unlock that psych lock. You don't know who that is either. Hmm. Nope, she's, she's needs to just go away because she's literally useless. am I supposed to do? Alright, Edgeworth, what else do you gotta talk to me about? Hmm? I'm just gonna keep pressing things. I'm gonna keep presenting this stuff. Ooh, the camera. Hey, yeah. Really? Nothing to say about the camera. I'm just trying everything. No, okay. Um. Interesting, okay. Profiles. What about Wada? Nope. Why are you so smug? I can't with you. Also, like, I get that you're annoying and everything, but why does Phoenix suddenly just absolutely hate you? Did he think you were actually dead? Okay, I have one more idea. I had an idea. It's gone in my brain right now. Um, 
talk to her about her camera. <sighs> um, oh wait, we already did that. One second here. Okay. Let's go talk to Edgeworth. Jeez. I think there's one. I think I'm missing something. I was missing a talking point. It's right here. <laughs> Whatever. Okay. Okay. Miss Impact's death was most certainly a suicide. Of that, there is no mistake. However, we could not find her suicide note. That's when the police began to suspect that someone had hidden it. The note? But how do you know Miss Impact had even written such a note? There is no solid evidence, however. We did find traces of ink on her right index finger, which makes the likelihood of a suicide note very high. But who would hide such a thing? The police think it was Mr. Juan Corrida himself, the victim. He was the one who found her body, which makes him the only person who had a chance to hide her suicide note. Mr. Corrida hid his own manager's suicide note, but why? As long as her note is missing, any speculation beyond this is meaningless. For now, I think you should look at this over. This is the report, part one anyway. Part one? Hmm. Hmm. I don't like to look through reports. I like suicide reports even less. Worst of all are the reports that have multiple parts like that one. That one has two. Two parts? What you just handed to me is the first part of the report. Here is the second part. The second part? The tempter's name is Adrian Andrews. Miss Andrews? What's she do? She, she tried to kill herself? She doesn't seem like the kind of person to try and kill herself, though. You think she's a strong career woman? That's just what she wants you to think. Adrian Andrews, she has a certain secret she's always trying to hide. A secret? Her dependent nature, that's what she was really like on the inside. Miss Andrews, talk about the exact opposite of what that woman is. Oops, 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 oops. Okay. Okay. We have to find her now to get that psych lock off. Okay. Okay, Edgeworth. I guess you're being somewhat useful. What a nightmare. Alright, let's talk to you. Suicide report is just like, oh, I don't know anything about that. Let's present it to the tabloid reporter. That seems responsible. I don't know. <laughs> That's so funny. Okay, um. Yeah, right, game. Yeah, right. Uh huh. They would just be like, oh, I don't know. You're not here. Where are you? Where in the heck are you? Gosh. Where haven't I been? Oh, I could go back to the... Mm. Maybe I have to go talk to... Here. Let's go to the detention center, maybe? Really? Where do you want me to go? Oh, there is more. I need to start clicking on the talk button. Okay. What's this report about Miss Andrews having a dependent nature? Adrian Andrews' attempt at suicide was a few days after the death of Celeste Impacts. And, and why did Adrian Andrews think about committing suicide? 
because she had apparently lost her will to live. Lost her will, but why would she? Her pillar of strength, her mentor Celeste Impacts, was gone forever. That's why. Why would that? Is this what they call following someone to the grave? After her attempted suicide, Adrian Andrews started attending counseling sessions. She is someone who needs a person in whom she can trust absolutely. And once she finds that person, she'll do anything she can to keep them near. Without such an anchor in her life, her crippling anxiety stifles her ability to live. And that's the nature of her dependency on others? When Celeste Impact suddenly committed suicide, the world before her turned pitch dark. That's according to Adrian Andrews herself. Then, that means her super confident attitude. It's all a facade. She's only copying her mentor's behavior to hold herself together. How terrible. Appearances can be deceiving. It's such a cliché saying, but it's cliché because it's true. Miss Andrews, to think that behind that unwavering brave front she's been hiding this weakness and fear. Yo. Alright, is thing are things gonna work now? Are you gonna be here? Gosh, so much work. Okay, um, hallway. I know this hotel so well now. She's here! Huzzah! Magic powers. Oh, Miss Andrews is here. Looks like she's talking with someone. That's Francisca von Karma. Miss von Karma, what are you doing here? Oh my goodness, I lost the accent. It was gone. <laughs> well, you see, I'm his lawyer, so... You've got some net following me around. Following you? That's you, Miss von Karma. You're the one doing the following. Pearls. You're always following after that Mr. Detective with the little beard. <laughs> me? Following after Scarfy. Don't make Miss Love. <laughs> Let me show you something interesting, little girl. What's that? An electromagnetic receiver. I found a tracking device on my detective. A witness. I know that fools every move. So that noise. I feel really sorry. Now then, let's stop wasting time. Adrian Andrews? Yes? Think hard about what we discussed, understood? Uh, Alright. What were those two talking about? Miss Andrews, she seems a little dazed, doesn't she? Hmm, okay, here we go. Uh, let's save our progress. Darn it, Edgeworth. I guess you were more useful than I thought you'd be. I just didn't press the talk button. <laughs> Alright, let's do this. I don't think it's gonna work if I just present the the note and report and stuff. Alright, here we go. Mm-hmm. Alright, tabloid. A silly third-rate tabloid article. If you even had your wits about you, you wouldn't believe such rubbish. <laughs> I see. However, what if there was a need for you to get close to someone? Me? You should get close to Ms. Mr. Corita, as if there was never such a need. <laughs> Sorry for the triggering. Mm-hmm. Celeste Impacts, your mentor. What do you know about Celeste? Miss Impact. She committed suicide, didn't she? But it looks like no one knows why. Right before her death, she was Juan Corrida's manager. So I believe you got close to Miss Cor Mr. Corrida, so you could find out more about her suicide. You, you have a <laughs> great imagination. You may have a future yet as a slimy muckraker for a putrid third-rate tabloid. Miss Andrews? There's, there's no mystery surrounding her death. None. 
would be pointless for me to force myself into a relationship for nothing. I don't believe you were completely at ease with her way, the way it was resolved. Mm-hmm. The note was never found, was it? Looks like the police were under the suspicion that someone had hidden it. Like maybe the person who discovered her body, Mr. Corda? Juan? And Miss Andrews, I believe you thought the same thing. That is why you became intimate with Mr. Corda? Hmm. Hmm? I've sat back quietly and listened to your insulting ramblings long enough. It's true that Celeste was my mentor. However, allow me to say this again. It had nothing to do with me. I didn't even know that her suicide note was never found. I'm a person who doesn't care about what goes on in the lives of others. I don't think that's who you really are. What? I have evidence that says otherwise. Mm-hmm. Miss Andrews, you nearly went through with it, too, didn't you? Went through with what? Ending your life. Miss Andrews, you look and act like a very strong woman who has it all together. You don't ask for anyone's help, relying only on yourself. Yes, I've been very independent ever since I can remember. However, this is all just a lie. A facade. We're stealing Edgeworth's words, okay. You've always searched out people on whom you can depend on. That's... You were dependent on Miss Impacts, weren't you? Which is why, when she passed away, you lost everything you had. Stop. When Celeste passed away so suddenly like that, oh, I died of my own, a death of my own, but no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't stop thinking about what had become of her note. You must have heard about the police report. The one that said the police suspected Mr. Corda of hiding Miss Impax's note? You heard about it and thought to recover it from him by getting close, am I right? If that's the case, then everything changes. Wh what do you mean? What topic did we start this conversation on again? It was why was the victim killed? Exactly. Somehow, Miss Andrews. Seems that you have become the one with a reason on what Mr. Carter the dead. Me. Miss Impacts was everything to you. And then she died. And you would do anything to find out why she killed herself. Even commit murder. Murder? It was quite the unpleasant conversation. It's true. I am a woman who can only live in insecurity. I'm physically small and I don't really have a lot of self-confidence. I've pushed against all that, though. I've tried to live strongly. I never wanted anyone to find out the truth. Miss Anthus. <laughs> Sorry, the voice got me. Okay, continuing. This one thing, it's the one thing I always wanted to take with me to the grave. It was my secret, mine and mine alone. I, I'm, I'm sorry. You probably think I'm a worthless human being right now, don't you? Please, Miss Andrews, all I want to know is the truth. Tell her she's not worthless, you pig. After Celeste passed away, I heard that someone had hidden her suicide note, and that someone was Juan Corda. Celeste, without her... I became scared. Everything, everyone seemed like they were out to get me. So you got close to Mr. Corda to recover her suicide note, correct? Looks like that tabloid reported the truth after all. <laughs> Ironic, isn't it? Well, like they say, where there's smoke, there's fire. But if they purposely add fuel to the fire, they keep the celebrity world burning. But as for the note, I didn't and wouldn't kill anyone for it. It just doesn't suit me, that's all. Well, that's enough for now. I still have work to do, so... I understand. Oh, and I have one small favor to ask. My attempted suicide. I'd like for you to keep it a secret. Miss Andrews, if people could find out about my weakness, I, I would sooner choose to die than live. Alright, I understand. We'll keep it a secret. Jeez. I guess she's the overthinking type. She probably never says anything without just carefully thinking it through first. Thank you for your discretion. Mr. Nick, can I ask you something? What is it? Miss Andrews has been playing with that card in her hand since a little while back. That card? Oh, I guess she has. Miss Andrews, what is that card you're holding? Huh? Oh, this? 
I don't quite know, it just appeared in my handbag. What is it? It looks like a seashell? That's what it looks like, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Honestly, don't remember owning this card. I wonder where I picked it up from. For not remembering something clearly? Sounds like it'd be a rare occurrence. Well, I must be off. At least Mr. Ungod to your capable hands. Oh, okay. Hi, Pearl. Well, I think we've gathered about all we can. What about Mystic Maya? Is she alright? Oh, Pearl, she, she looks so worried about all this. She hasn't slept at all and has been walking all over the place with me today. What's wrong, Mr. Nick? Let's go back to the office for a little while. You're really tired, right? Oh no, I'm okay, really. I'm fine, I really am. You don't look fine to me. Hmm. That's crazy. What else do I have to do? Oh, we're going back to the... Hold on. I want to see Edgeworth again. There's no one here. Everyone's gone. I wonder if the three of them went to eat together. I don't think they'd ever do that. They're probably in yet another meeting. So this will just go back here, I'm guessing. Yep. So what now? Well, we did find one thing out for sure. Miss Andrews has a motive. You mean Miss Impacts is- no? That's right. She was also the one to discover the victim's body. <laughs> Clever. Oh no. No. Mr. Nick the Transceiver. Hello? Right in Cola offices? <laughs> Mr. What voice did I give this person? I don't remember. Mr. Attorney. <laughs> You're not answering a phone. Maya, where's Maya? As I promised, I have not gone within a few feet of her this whole time. <sighs> Which is why I suppose she's absolutely famished. <laughs> what? So I suggest you win a quick acquittal, my friend. At any cost, wouldn't you agree? Wait, Maya, let me hear her. Very well. Ask my- Maya, is that you? Sis, ask my sis! Maya! He cut me off! Mystic Maya said ask my sis, didn't she? Sis? Come on, Phoenix, you're a hopeless one. Oh, sorry. <gasps> Mia! I have a message from Maya, so come ask anything you want from about her. <sighs> How's Maya? She's safe for now. That kidnapper is one to keep his word, it seems. I'm glad to hear she's safe, but Mia, how did you know? As soon as she was locked up, Maya called for me. I read the note she left, then I gathered as much information about her surroundings as I could. I didn't know you could use spirit channeling like that. <laughs> Pretty smart of her. The kidnapper, what's he like? I don't know. Apparently, Maya went into the, the answer phone call at the hotel and was drugged there. And? She didn't see the face of her attacker. <sighs> Maya's locked up in a very dark place right now. I'll tell you everything I heard when I was with her. When you were with her. That doesn't look dark. <laughs> I'm starving. I could really go for some apple pie. I mean, at a time like this, sweets are the only way to go. I have to stay positive. He promised he wasn't going to kill me. I'm not going to die. Sis, I wonder if you're with Nick right now. It's too dark to see. Trap. It's locked. This door was locked seemed easy enough to open. On TV, the hero always uses a plastic card or a stiff piece of cardboard. <laughs> Then click, they magically open the door. I wonder if there's a card like that around here I could use. What's this? Feels like there's are there are a lot of glass bottles here. And these, they feel like barrels. I'll pass. Too bad I'm really hungry and not really thirsty. Huh? Someone dropped a car here. It looks like a business card. There's no name on it. a picture of a seashell, I think. What a strange card. That's it. This shell card. If I use this, maybe I can get the door open. This might be my key out of here. I had a feeling this card might be useful. I'm such a genius. Alright, now if you'll excuse me, Mr. Kidnapper. I did it. Okay, now I'm getting the heck out of here. 
I shouldn't keep Nick waiting or worried. What in the heck? Why are there so many layers? What is going on? Join us next time for the trial. I got I need time. I got to recover from this.